On our way back from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, we decided that it was finally time to find out what was really at the end of the notorious Zizek's Road. After turning off the I-15 interstate freeway, we followed a bumpy road heading towards a giant dried up lake bed with nothing else in sight but distant desert mountains. With some trepidation, we followed the road which became increasingly twisted and large holes challenged our car to head off the soft shoulder and around them. And then we saw it. In the far distance, an oasis of palm trees and what appeared to be a small lake. We were concerned about whether to press on any further. There was no one out here, and my phone signal had died. But eventually, we arrived at a sign telling visitors to turn into the parking lot for the orientation center. Were we going to be indoctrinated and subsumed into a lost desert cult? The only other vehicle in the lot was a truck with a sticker of an AR-15, the weapon commonly used in mass shootings in the United States. It read, I study trigonometry. The silence is profound and it feels super isolated. As we walked along the path past the flushless toilets, we came across the resort itself. A street sign still standing that reads, The Boulevard of Dreams. We were surprised to see that there were actually many vehicles and quite a few people walking around. Were these the cultists of Zizek's? Were they going to shoot at us? Maybe eat us alive? Zizek's Road is located in the California Mojave Desert about two hours south of Las Vegas. About five miles down the I-15, past this dried up lake bed, lies this oasis with spring water that was used for many years by Native American tribes, Spanish explorers, miners, railroad workers, not to mention the area's wildlife, bighorn sheep, coyotes, several species of birds, lizards, and even endangered Mojave fish. At the end of this road is what remains of the Zizek's Mineral Springs and Health Resort, founded by Curtis Howe Springer in 1944. Springer, like one of his predecessors, Amy Semple McPherson, was a traveling preacher and radio evangelist who came from the East Coast to California to seek fame and fortune. Springer had a murky past that cannot be accurately verified. He claimed to have served in World War I as a boxing instructor, attended college in Chicago, and taught at schools all over the country. What was true is that he claimed to be an authority on health and well-being who had discovered several miracle cures and wanted to share them with the world. Springer discovered the oasis with his wife and daughter, filed a mining claim on 12,000 acres, and began building his resort where he would share his spiritual insights and miracle cures with the world. It is interesting to note that he didn't actually purchase the land, he just filed the claim for mining rights, so he was just squatting. Springer would travel to Los Angeles several times weekly to record his radio sermons, while there, he would drive his crusade bus to Skid Row, where he would promise the unfortunate souls he met food and shelter in exchange for construction work on Zizek's Road. Some left immediately when they realized the amount of work needed to be done and that Springer had a strictly enforced no-alcohol policy. But many stayed and built the resort, and a few lived there for the rest of their lives. The resort consisted of a chapel, a crucifix-shaped pool with soaking tubs, an artificial lake with a fountain in the center, a 60-room hotel, a broadcasting room, and even an airstrip for private planes that Springer called the Zyport. He acquired an old sea freighter and stripped it for construction materials to build the resort. You can still see one of the lifeboats next to the lake, preserved by the dry desert air. He named the place Zizek's because he wanted his resort to be known as the last word in health and well-being. Zizek's became a popular destination for those seeking a peaceful and healing retreat. At the height of its popularity, the constant coming and going and the resultant postal correspondence to and from Zizek's made the post office at the nearby tiny town of Baker one of the busiest in Southern California. Springer loudly proclaimed the healing benefits of the natural mineral hot springs and its 27 assorted miracle cures for everything from hemorrhoids to hair loss. 
The springs on the property were not hot at all, but Springer had water heaters specially built to heat the pools in the bathhouse. Guests were treated to a diet of rabbit meat, the only locally available meat, and vegetables brought in by truck twice a week. They were served a special tea that Springer claimed would make them live longer, and twice a day he would preach sermons to them over the PA system. It cost about the same to stay at Zizek's as any typical hotel at the time. Still, guests were freely encouraged to donate significantly to Springer's ministry and purchase his tonics and health remedies. Zizek's flourished for almost 30 years until Springer's legal troubles caught up with him. He faced many lawsuits for his false claims about the miracle cures and benefits he offered at Zizek's. He also started selling off parcels of land adjacent to the resort, which led the Bureau of Land Management to look into the legalities of what he was doing. Springer was not permitted to sell land he didn't own, and in 1974, Springer and several hundred acolytes who had chosen to follow him to the desert were evicted from the property. Springer died in Las Vegas in 1986 at 90 after serving several short prison sentences for various felonies. But he effectively did have the last word when in 1984, Zizek's was officially entered as the site's geographical name. Today, it is occupied by the Desert Studies Center of California State University. So eventually, we come upon a woman sitting on a bench in front of a swing set who explains that the cars belong to people attending a symposium of the Desert Research Institute, and they were meeting again for the first time in person at Zizek's since the COVID-19 pandemic, three years prior. The Institute presents research on everything about the desert, from wildlife, geology, mining, history, and rock art. Zizek's is well past its glamorous heyday, but there remains a strange beauty in its peace and isolation. The area's unique history and otherworldly landscape makes it a destination well worth the trip down Zizek's Road. And it's a sanctuary for local wildlife. The desert holds many strange and obscure surprises and stories if you know where to look. And we thank you for joining us on this one. We have this lovely uh, 12,000 acre estate here that belongs to God. If you want to come and stay, if we have room for you, you'll come and stay for a month. If at the end of that month's time, you have received any results that you think are worthwhile and you're capable to do so, we would appreciate whatever you care to contribute. If you don't, you owe us nothing. And if you'd like to have a package of Varana Green Herb Tea, and there's no charge at all if you get results, a contribution will help. If it doesn't, you owe us nothing. <laughs>